Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. In this video, we will introduce you to every Godzilla variant that ever existed. Did you know there have been an alien Godzilla and a baby Godzilla among the many incarnations of this king of the monsters? Well, full marks to you as a Godzilla fan if you did know. Created by Japanese studio Toho in 1954 as Gojira, the kaiju or fantasy monster was introduced as an allegory for the dangers of nuclear weapons. Eventually, it became a pop culture icon as Godzilla across the world. To say that Godzilla has had a successful run would be an understatement because over 35 movies later, this monster is still raging on. Throughout his impressive career, Godzilla has shuttled between the roles of a villain, a hero, an anti-hero, and a protector, depending on who has donned the director's hat. In this video, we will explore every avatar of the part reptilian, part amphibian monster and take you along for the ride. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you and let's begin. 1954 Godzilla The debut Godzilla appeared in the first ever Godzilla movie in 1954, will always be the most epic of them all in terms of its origin story and on-screen impact. The film arrived less than a decade after the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki and showed Godzilla as a type of ancient creature that remained dormant underwater for millions of years until an atomic bomb test in the Pacific Ocean not only awakened it but also mutated it into a giant monster. However, the film's paleontologist Dr. Kayoe Yamani suggested that Godzilla may have been living with his family underwater till the detonation obliterated his habitat and forced him out on land. This thought was further explored by official artwork of the 1954 Godzilla, which depicted him living with others of his kind underwater. After Godzilla made it to the surface, he became an unstoppable destructive force that the Japanese self-defense forces tried to tackle. Godzilla's most significant power was seen as his atomic breath, which was a result of its mutation from the blast radiation, and this has remained Godzilla's signature ability across all its variations. Setting off entire city blocks on fire with its mist-like blaze was no biggie for the 1954 Godzilla. He was also immune to anything and everything that the Japanese military attacked him with, which was no surprise. Given even that he survived a nuclear explosion underwater. Standing 50 meters tall, the Godzilla was often seen biting and gnawing down Tokyo buildings on one hand while destroying structures with its dramatic tail swerves on the other. However, the 1954 Godzilla did not prove to be immune to the oxygen destroyer, which killed him at the end of the movie. Showa era Godzilla 1955 saw the appearance of another Godzilla in the movie Godzilla Raids Again. This kaiju continued to feature in the subsequent Godzilla movies of the Showa era, which started with the 1954 one and ended with Terror of Mechagodzilla in 1975. This Godzilla is the same part amphibian, part reptilian species as its predecessor and acted as the main antagonist of the Showa era movies up until 1964. Though the quality of the Showa era Godzilla's was affected by low budget, the biggest change in Godzilla's alliance overshadowed it all. In 1964's Ghidorah, the three-headed monster, Godzilla became the hero and remained that way through the rest of the films of the Showa era. When Ghidorah, a monstrous dragon king from outer space, attempted to destroy Earth, Mothra pleaded with Godzilla to turn protector of the planet, and he obliged. This Godzilla was also invested with a fun side, as he could shake hands and laugh. In addition to Godzilla's signature power, that is, his atomic breath, the Showa-era Godzilla had dorsal spikes which glowed ominously. He could also use his powerful breath for flight by aiming at the blast at the ground and taking off like a rocket. In Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, he could create magnetic fields from his body after being hit with lightning, and they were powerful enough to drag huge metallic structures into the field. The Showa-era Godzilla was completely immune to human weaponry and was way too powerful for the opponent monstrous creatures. Having said that, the slime monster Hedorah, the cyborg monster Gigan, and the alien Mechagodzilla were the only creatures who managed to injure Godzilla. 
Heisei Era Godzilla 1, 1984 to 1991. 1984 saw the emergence of the Heisei Era Godzilla in the appropriately titled film The Return of Godzilla. The Heisei Era movies changed the kaiju from the protector to the destroyer again, assigning it a brand new origin story. The Heisei Era Godzilla was originally a dinosaur of the Godzillasaurus species that mutated into an 80 meter creature with darker scales and larger thighs than the Showa-era Godzilla as a result of a hydrogen bomb testing in 1954, after which it went about destroying the world. Meanwhile, in the early 90s, time travelers from 2204 arrived in Japan, informing them that an ancient Godzillasaurus living on an island of the Pacific Ocean would transform into the indestructible Godzilla after exposure to nuclear radiation in 1954. The Futurians, as the time Time travelers were called, planned to travel further back in time, all the way back to 1944, and move the Godzillasaurus from the Lagos Island to the Bering Sea ahead of the atomic activity of 1954. But what they didn't realize was that in doing so, they resulted in the accidental creation of the future Godzilla. In the altered timeline, a nuclear submarine crashed into the Bering Sea in 1970 and irradiated the dying Godzillasaurus. The radiation from the crash transformed the Godzillasaurus into something much more monstrous than the 1954 Godzilla, which emerged on the shores of Tokyo in 1984. The Heisei era spanned across 11 years and 7 movies, in the course of which Godzilla exhibited new powers and abilities. The Heisei era Godzilla was more primitive and animalistic with its reactions. Compared to the Showa era version, his dorsal fins glowed blue as he released atomic breath at 500,000 degrees Celsius. In the first half of the Heisei era, Godzilla's atomic breath got upgraded to the spiral heat ray, which was basically blue atomic blasts wrapped in purple electricity sparks. Godzilla used the spiral heat ray to behead King Ghidorah's middle head after he failed to do so with his normal atomic breath. The Heisei era Godzilla was also equipped with nuclear pulse, which was the ability to exude atomic energy from his body as a short-range attack. Godzilla used the nuclear pulse to fight off the monsters, Biolante and Ghidorah. The Heisei-era Godzilla came with enhanced durability. He was immune to extreme temperatures as he remained trapped in the lava crater of Mount Mihara for five years. His regenerative abilities played a central role in the Heisei-era films. Because of the regenerative nature of his cells, the Godzilla cells or G-cells were highly prized commodities in the scientific world and were used to generate anti-nuclear energy bacteria, which was used to break down nuclear material. The plant mutant Biolante, Godzilla's first enemy in the Heisei era, was also born out of the G-cells. Heisei Era Godzilla 2, 1991 to 1995. In the second half of the Heisei Era, Godzilla exhibited new powers, which he gained as a result of defeating his opponents. Godzilla's spiral heat ray doubled its intensity and became the super flame heat ray after he absorbed Fire Rodan's life essence. Measuring over a million degrees Celsius in temperature, the super flame heat ray was intense enough to burn Godzilla's mouth and exacted a toll on him, preventing him from firing it for long stretches. Godzilla adopted another form of atomic breathing, which is nuclear fusion heat ray, after he absorbed cosmic energy during the destruction of space Godzilla's crystals. In the final film of the Heisei era, Godzilla vs. Destoroya, Godzilla turned into the burning Godzilla after he was empowered by atomic energy from the explosion of Boss Island. This permanently turned his atomic breath into a red burning heat ray. When the burning Godzilla melted down and his dorsal spines began to deform, he released super powerful radiations in orange and red concentric circles. Godzilla exhibited another form of nuclear pulse after Mechagodzilla's shock anchor harpoons clawed into it. Through the cables, he channeled back humongous amounts of heat and radiation that damaged Mechagodzilla's internal functioning. Much like the Showa-era Godzilla, the Heisei Godzilla had monumental physical strength, as he was seen wiping the floor with King Ghidorah while holding him by his tails and strangling Rodan up close.
Godzilla Jr. Alongside the protagonist Godzilla, the Heisei era films saw the emergence of another Godzilla, who is best described as adorable. We are talking about Godzilla Jr., who was first introduced in 1993's Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2, was called Baby Godzilla. In Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla, he was one year old and called Little Godzilla, while in Godzilla vs. Destoroyah, he became Godzilla Jr. His interesting origin story traces him back to Adenoa Island, when a Godzillasaurus egg was found in a Pteranodon nest and was watched over by the Pteranodon Rodan. When Rodan was busy fighting off the full-sized Godzilla to protect the egg, scientists procured the egg and brought it to a Tokyo laboratory, where it hatched and out came Baby Godzilla. After the death of Rodan, Baby Godzilla was taken in by the OG Godzilla as his son. One year later, Little Godzilla Godzilla encountered the space Godzilla, who almost killed him with his cosmic attacks, but he was saved just in time by his adoptive father. Interestingly, baby Godzilla shared an unexplained psychic link with Godzilla. Years later, the little monster transformed into Godzilla Jr., standing 40 meters tall and possessing his father's atomic breath ability. Godzilla Jr. died at the hands of the Destoroyah, but was resurrected when Godzilla melted down as a result of his uncontrollable nuclear energy, and Godzilla Jr. absorbed all the radiation. Godzilla Jr. emerged in a fully mutated form from his father's last remains. Millennium Series Godzilla The Godzilla franchise was rebooted with the Millennium Series, starting with the 1999 film Godzilla 2000. Millennium The many Godzillas that appeared in the Millennium Series films were either incarnations or descendants of the original 1954 Godzilla, but they never contradicted each other because of different continuities. For example, in Godzilla 2000, the Millennium Godzilla was shown to be a creature who had appeared in Japan sometime after the 1954 Godzilla's death and remained the country's adversary ever since. It gets confusing with the Godzilla that appeared in Godzilla vs. Megagirus. He was the second Godzilla in the Millennium series and was shown as the same creature who attacked Tokyo in 1954. But the makers changed his fate from the original movie and that's how he was still alive. Same with the GXMG Godzilla who appeared in the Millennium Series films Godzilla against Mechagodzilla and Godzilla. Tokyo SOS, the 2001 Godzilla, got a supernatural twist as he contained the vengeful spirits of those who died in World War II. Final Wars Godzilla 2 was a 1954 incarnation who didn't die in the original movie, but remained trapped under Antarctic ice for years before rising again. The Godzillas of the Millennium Series all exhibited signature Godzilla powers, such as atomic breath, nuclear pulse, and enhanced durability. A distinct trait of the 1999 Millennium Godzilla was the presence of a substance named Organizer G1 in his cells, which enabled the creature to heal quickly within a short span of time. Exploring that logic, the film scientist Dr. Yuji Shinoda predicted that Millennium Godzilla's cells held the secret to immortality. 1998 Godzilla Hollywood made its first Godzilla movie in 1998 and was met with criticism both from fans and, of course, Toho because of producing Studio TriStar's departure from the original flavor of Godzilla. Director Roland Emmerich changed Godzilla from an ancient monster to a mutated creature that hatched from an iguana egg. Following this, he was exposed to a nuclear test conducted in 1968 in French Polynesia and grew over 30 years. This Godzilla was capable of asexual reproduction, having lain over 200 eggs in New York's Madison Square Garden. Even at 180 feet, the 1998 Godzilla was just a fraction of the original Godzilla and had more animalistic features than that of an ancient monster. After TriStar's rights to the 1998 Godzilla ran out in 2000, 2003, Toho acquired the rights and revamped this Godzilla into another character altogether. Toho subtracted God from its name and called it Zilla, 
In 2004's Godzilla Final Wars, Toho never acknowledged it as Godzilla and instead referred to it as a creature that rampaged through New York in 1998. The 1998 Godzilla lacked the signature powers of the Japanese Godzilla like atomic breath and nuclear pulse but was distinctively agile, could run really fast and showed great intelligence in evading military attacks. He was able to outrun full-speed helicopters and dodge missiles. His bluish-gray skin color allowed him to camouflage with New York's high-rises. This Godzilla maintained a surprisingly low body temperature and hence couldn't be detected by thermal scanners. His dorsal plates could slice through metal, while he could also burrow through concrete surfaces with his 5-foot-long teeth and 6-foot-long talons. Instead of atomic breath, the 1998 Godzilla could release blasts of flames, which however were later included in post-production to satiate unhappy fans. This Godzilla was not immune to military weaponry and died at the end of the film by missile attacks. Shin Godzilla The Shin Godzilla, which appeared in the 2016 Japanese film of the same name, got assigned a new origin story. As an ancient underwater creature, the Shin Godzilla found itself surrounded by nuclear waste dumped into Tokyo Bay in the 1950s. It adapted to its radioactive surroundings, as a result of which it mutated for 60 years and eventually grew limbs. After making it to the surface in Tokyo in 2016, the Shin Godzilla continued to evolve till it could stand upright. Standing 118 meters tall with an even more grotesque appearance, the Shin Godzilla was the tallest incarnation of the King of Monsters in the franchise's history at the time. The Shin Godzilla was Toho's coolest version of the kaiju, whose atomic breath took the form of a concentrated purple radiation stream of fire. The Shin Godzilla could also fire radiation streams from his dorsal spikes and from his tail. That too, in sync with his atomic breath. He was able to fire the additional beams because of the presence of a spare head at the end of his tail. However, the nuclear fission inside his body created so much heat that he had to head back to the ocean to cool off. The Shin Godzilla could mutate his DNA at will and possessed eight times the genetic information of human beings. This Godzilla also had a silver anti-flash defensive membrane with which he covered his eyes when bombs were dropped on his head. He also possessed possessed an attack radar, which enabled him to detect threats without seeing them. Mecha Godzilla If you are wondering what could possibly be more menacing than a three-way flame shooting Godzilla, hello, have you met Mecha Godzilla, the Hollywood version of the robotic kaiju, which has its roots in the Japanese Godzilla movies, was seen in the 2021 film Godzilla vs. Kong. This super advanced gigantic Godzilla counterpart was created by Apex Cybernetics, as the company owner Walter Simmons wanted to replace the ancient titan with something controllable. Build on the post credit scene of Godzilla King of the Monsters, which showed the severed head of Ghidorah that Godzilla tore off. The 2021 movie showed that it was currently in the possession of Apex Cybernetics. Ghidorah could telepathically coordinate between its three heads. Hence, Simmons and its chief scientist, Sarazava, harnessed that telepathic power for their Mecha Godzilla and were able to control it through the Ghidorah head without physically having to be inside the Mecha Godzilla. This, Hollywood incarnation of the Mecha Godzilla came with technologically upgraded versions of Godzilla's powers, such as Proton Scream instead of Atomic Breath, which Mecha Godzilla fired from its mouth, and which it attempted to shoot down Godzilla's throat. Being a robot, Mecha Godzilla came with thrusters, enabling it to have quick bursts of movement. Mecha Godzilla was also equipped with missile launchers with which it temporarily managed to disorient Godzilla, who was otherwise immune to conventional weaponry. Mecha Godzilla had its tail as one of its biggest and most used weapons. It was equipped with a drill, with which he almost killed Kong. The drilling tail was created in the concept of the Kiryu Mecha Godzilla from the Millennium Era, which had a revolving drill in its hand. Now, let's take a look at the Mecha Godzillas of the Japanese Godzilla movies. Toho introduced its first robotic Godzilla during the Showa era films in 1974's Godzilla vs. Mecha Godzilla. 
the black hole, Planet 3 aliens studied the functioning of the real Godzilla and created the Mecha Godzilla on Earth as a battle machine to take over Earth when their own planet was on the verge of being sucked into the black hole. After Godzilla destroyed the Mecha Godzilla, the aliens created another powerful version of it that featured in the next film. Meanwhile, the Heisei Mecha Godzilla was created by the anti Godzilla organization G Force as a weapon to take down the King of Monsters. G Force's first robotic anti Godzilla weapon, Garuda, was a failure, following which they studied the technological information obtained from the severed head of Mecha King Ghidorah, a cyborg from the future, and used that information to create the Mecha Godzilla. In the Millennium Era, the Kiryu Mecha Godzilla was a bio robot that was created around the skeleton of the 1954 Godzilla, which died in the first film. It was equipped with something called DNA computers. In order to make the Kiryu operate like an organic being, because of Godzilla's DNA inclusion in the Kiryu, it was extremely vulnerable to Godzilla's roars and became unstable during encounters with the Godzilla. The Mecha Godzillas possessed technologically induced abilities, mimicking Godzilla's mutated powers, but never being as powerful as the real kaiju. The first Mecha Godzilla could fire a rainbow-colored space beam from his eyes, which was powerful enough to collide with Godzilla's atomic breath. The second version of the Mecha Godzilla fired a similar colorful beam called the Mega Buster, but from its mouth. The Heisei Mega Godzilla could release a concentrated, superheated beam of plasma called the Plasma Grenade, which was strengthened by absorbing beam attacks from other monsters. The Millennium Mecha Godzilla Kiryu's atomic breath took the form of the Type 99 double Mazer cannon placed in its mouth. Both the Showa and Heisei Mecha Godzillas could fly and blast their beams at the same time. Because of their robotic nature, all the Mecha Godzillas had missiles and grenades in their arsenal. The Showa Mecha Godzilla fired missiles from its rotating fingers, from its knees, from its mouth, and was even equipped with drilling missiles in its toes. The Mecha Godzilla 2 got an up grade and could launch paralyzer missiles and tranquilizer missiles to stun Godzilla before attacking him. The Kiryu Mechagodzilla could fire long-range interlocking rockets, with which he bombarded Godzilla. All versions of the Mecha Godzillas were equipped with extremely durable armor, with the Heisei Mecha Godzilla being covered in an artificial diamond coating. The Showa Mecha Godzilla could deploy a defensive barrier, completely immune to Godzilla's atomic breath. Though the Mecha Godzillas were controlled by either the alien forces or the G Force pilots or the DNA computers, the robotic monsters were able to make decisions through artificial intelligence during battle. The Hollywood version of the Mecha Godzilla was extremely powerful, fighting off both Godzilla and Kong at once. Its deadliest weapon was the Proton Scream, which easily overpowered Godzilla's atomic breath, blasting him backwards. However, it is argued that Godzilla couldn't release his atomic breath at full strength because he was exhausted from drilling into the hollow earth and fighting Kong. The 2021 Mecha Godzilla was also equipped with missile launchers behind its shoulder blades and a bunch of rocket boosters fireable from its dorsal spikes. Designer Jared Krichevsky also gave Mechagodzilla missiles inside his chest and tail. His tail was a deadly weapon in itself, fixed with three rotating spikes, which almost pierced Kong's face. Mechagodzilla had rotor claws for fingers with bus saws inside of them. In addition, Mechagodzilla's armor was insanely durable with the endoskeleton being composed of titanium. It was damaged only after Kong and Godzilla joined forces. All said and done, Mecha Godzilla was eventually decapitated by Kong as Godzilla powered up the axe with his atomic breath. Space Godzilla Next, we have Space Godzilla, an alien version of the King of Monsters who made his way to Earth in order to destroy Godzilla and take over the planet. He was one of the most powerful opponents Godzilla faced. Godzilla was defeated in his first encounter with the alien monster and required the help of Magira to defeat the Space Godzilla. The 1994 movie Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla 
suggested that Space Godzilla was created when Godzilla cells, which somehow made it to space, were absorbed by the black hole and exited from a white hole. Exposed to the energy of exploding stars, the cells started evolving and assimilating crystalline organisms, and thus emerged Space Godzilla. The film discussed two possibilities about how Godzilla cells could have traveled to space. The first one was that Biollante, the plant hybrid monster containing Godzilla cells, carried the cells to space after fighting the kaiju in 1990. And the second one was that the cells floated into space on Mothra's wings in 1993, when she wanted to stop a meteor headed for Earth. The Space Godzilla came with a bunch of cool powers like the Tail Smasher. He used his crystal spike tail, lit up in orange hues, to wipe the floor with Magira. It could also deploy a proton reactive shield, which was strong enough to deflect Godzilla's atomic breath. He could also fire energy beams both from his shoulder crystals and his mouth. They had a curved tip to pierce into the victims and struck like a lightning whip. With his telekinetic power gravity tornado, Space Godzilla propelled Godzilla into the air. He could also absorb and control energy and manipulate the ground around him to create crystalline structures. He could manifest shards of crystal out of thin air to attack his opponents. While flying, Space Godzilla could generate Photon Hurricane, a ring-shaped electromagnetic wave, which could destroy electrical instruments. Because of the presence of Godzilla's cells in his body, Space Godzilla also had the power of regenerative healing. 2001 Godzilla Now let's meet the 2001 Godzilla, who featured in the film Godzilla, Mothra, and King Ghidorah. Giant monsters all out attack. He's got an interesting origin story. For a long time, he was thought to be the 1954 Godzilla, who was killed in the original film and was resurrected in the 2001 movie. But that idea was dismissed when the book Toho Special Effects Movie Complete came out in 2012. The book described the 1954 Godzilla as first generation, hinting that he was the predecessor of the 2001 version. 2001 Godzilla was a supernatural incarnation of the beast who was possessed by the souls of the soldiers who died in World War II. He arrived in modern-day Japan to avenge those who died in the war and destroy the country for having forgotten its World War II victims. Filled with restless souls, this Godzilla was pure evil who actively attacked civilians. Three ancient guardian monsters, Baragon, Mothra, and King Ghidorah, had to be awakened to battle the supernatural beast. This Godzilla's atomic breath could generate a mushroom cloud of fire powerful enough to injure other kaijus, and it was equally powerful underwater. This Godzilla powered up his atomic breath with King Ghidorah's gravity beams and blasted out a blue flame wrapped in electrical spirals. It proved to be lethal for King Ghidorah, who was destroyed in a single hit. The 2001 Godzilla exhibited extreme durability and enhanced physical strength against the Guardian monsters. He pinned Baragon to the ground during their battle, bit down on Ghidorah's necks, and knocked away Mothra with his tail. Final Wars Godzilla 2004 for Godzilla's 50th birthday, Toho created a more menacing and more towering Godzilla, as seen in the 2004 movie Godzilla Final Wars. This Godzilla was first awakened in 1954 because of nuclear activity, following which it repeatedly rampaged through Tokyo while the world was already plagued by other monstrous creatures. Unable to defeat this 100-meter-tall Godzilla, Japan's Earth Defense Force lured him to Antarctica when an earthquake trapped Godzilla under the ice with an avalanche, sealing off the ground above him. The EDF cordoned off the area as Area G with Godzilla trapped inside till the 21st century, when he was released again to battle against an army of monsters. At the end of the movie, Godzilla turned on those who released him but was calmed by his adoptive son Manila, an infant kaiju. The Final Wars Godzilla exhibited several powerful versions of the atomic breath, lashing out with spiral heat rays, with which he destroyed an asteroid. He also released burning spark rays, which he achieved after absorbing mutant energy in order to destroy the Kaiser Ghidorah, the transformed version of Monster X. Final Wars Godzilla displayed great agility and intelligence while battling his opponents, often attacking with his hands and tail. Godzilla was also adept at battling his enemies underwater, blasting Hedora and Ebera out of Tokyo Bay.
This Godzilla barely showed any weaknesses, with Monster X being the only opponent who could seriously injure him. Godzilla was almost killed by Monster X before Mothra and the EDF intervened. Monster vs. Godzilla Legendary Pictures and Warner Brothers created the film franchise Monster vs. in 2014 by launching a reimagined version of the King of the Monsters in the 2014 film Godzilla. The Monster vs. Godzilla was assigned a new origin story, dating back millions of years ago. As per Monster vs., this Godzilla was an ancient relic from the Permian period who made it through several extinction events by hibernating deep under the ocean and feeding off the Earth's natural geothermal radiation from its molten core. It mutated over millions of years till it was awakened by the nuclear bombing of Hiroshima in 1945. In MonsterVerse, it is believed that Godzilla's species were hunted by the parasitic titans Mutos and were driven to the brink of extinction, with Godzilla being the only survivor. As per MonsterVerse, Godzilla's species had a long-standing war with Kong's species in Hollow Earth, and Godzilla was the alpha titan of his ecosystem, preventing the world from being overpopulated by titans. The 2014 Godzilla's atomic breath was a fiery beam, which he fired at the Mutos only after he was severely injured, hinting that he used his atomic breath as a last resort. However, in the 2019 MonsterVerse movie Godzilla, King of the Monsters, Godzilla's atomic breath took the form of a concentrated blue beam while his dorsal spikes glowed brightly, hinting that Godzilla wasn't blasting out his atomic breath at full capacity in the 2014 movie. FYI, at its weakest, Godzilla's atomic breath measures a whopping 20,000 degrees Celsius. The 2021 film Godzilla vs. Kong showed that Godzilla got the flame-breathing ability from an energy source in Hollow Earth and at the end of the movie, he was seen charging up his atomic breath from that energy source to power up Kong's axe. Having mutated for millions of years, the monster vs. Godzilla was insanely durable. He was dropped from a height of thousands of feet by Ghidorah, was punched around by Kong, which is comparable to a 4.2 magnitude earthquake and had Proton Beam blasted at by the Mecha Godzilla. Minor cuts and scratches aside, Godzilla was just fine. This Godzilla was capable of regenerative healing by absorbing large amounts of radiation. Fun fact, Godzilla could easily adjust to gravitational inversion, which is the gravity of a planet inversed in a split second. Like some reptiles, Godzilla had thermal vision through which he could detect other creatures with their body temperature. In Godzilla, King of the Monsters, Godzilla was able to spin and throw Ghidorah with ease and was strong enough to rip one of his heads apart. After Mothra died in the film and Godzilla absorbed her life essence, he gained the ability to understand Earth's atmospheric interactions along with the planet's geothermal past. The monster vs. Godzilla also extensively used his dorsal fin cutter and tail hammer as weapons, cutting through Navy battleships in Godzilla vs. Kong. To sum it up, the monster vs. Godzilla was powerful enough to tear off Ghidorah's head, slaughter the Mutos, blast away Kong, and play a significant role in Mechagodzilla's destruction. Godzilla Ultima 2021 2021 saw the emergence of another king of the monsters, Godzilla Ultima. In the Japanese anime series Godzilla Singular Point, ahead of Godzilla's appearance in the third episode of the series, which is set in 2030, Godzilla was portrayed as a mythical creature whose emergence was predicted to lead to a global disaster. He was mentioned in myths and legends, suggesting humans have encountered Godzilla before. The earliest depiction of Godzilla was found in a mirror in Nagashio City, following which he was said to have appeared in 1950 in a Japanese village. But people forgot all about him in the aftermath of World War II. His skeleton was procured by a scientist and preserved under the building Misa Kyoku. The scientists also discovered that the skeleton emitted a mysterious signal. After the scientist's death, Misa Kyoku was converted into a radio observatory tower with the intention of continuing to preserve the skeleton as mentioned in the scientist's will. After these two Godzilla mentions, Godzilla finally appeared in the series as an ocean-dwelling monster named 
Godzilla Aquatilis. He went through different evolutionary changes before becoming the Godzilla Ultima. Godzilla Aquatilis transformed into an amphibious monster after making it to the shore. Then Godzilla Amphibia enmeshed itself in a cocoon before transforming into Godzilla Terrestris. This Godzilla underwent a massive transformation and became Godzilla Ultima during an attack by the military. Godzilla Ultima then rapidly grew over 100 meters tall while resting near Tokyo Station. Godzilla Ultima had a more concentrated atomic breath than his previous versions, which took the form of seven rings in front of his mouth before blasting out as radiation bombs. These radiation blasts could slice through a manda and destroy military tanks. Once Godzilla Ultima reached his full height, his atomic breath grew strong enough to obliterate concrete structures. While Godzilla Ultima was resilient to conventional weaponry, he started bleeding when Amanda bit him in the neck. Godzilla Amphibia could release an extremely cold, flammable vapor that could cause an explosion as high as 500 meters. Meanwhile, Godzilla Terrestris could create blood tentacles out of his injuries. Godzilla Ultima could also create strange plants that could distort dimensions. This Godzilla's biggest power was his ability to produce and manipulate the red dust archetype, thus making him the singular point of the substance that created his various versions over time. Through his control over the archetype, this Godzilla could reshape everything around him, even controlling his own evolution. This made him immortal in the sense that Godzilla would always be able to manifest itself through the red dust archetype, even after dying. All the Godzilla forms exuded large amounts of red dust archetype, forming a cloud around them. Godzilla Minus One with Hollywood's Godzilla doing so well amongst fans, it's no surprise that Toho had to bring back another one. In the recently released Japanese movie Godzilla Minus One, this is the 37th entry in the overall Godzilla franchise and the fifth installment in the Reiwa era Godzilla films, which began with Shin Godzilla in 2016. The Minus One Godzilla is homage to Toho's traditional OG Godzilla, one that brings back the horror, drama, and anti-war message of the old Godzilla movies. If you don't mind minor spoilers about Godzilla Minus One, please keep watching because it's a throwback to the original kaiju. The Minus One Godzilla has a similar origin story as the 1954 version, an ancient monster provoked and mutated by nuclear activity. He's a monster who will never forgive the humans for what's been done to him. This Godzilla first appeared in the movie in the year 1945 on Odo Island when he was just a 15 meter tall marine theropod and then vanished into the sea. Two years later, he emerged from the ocean after being heavily burnt and mutated by the Operation Crossroads nuclear tests in Bikini Atoll. Before making landfall in Japan, Godzilla destroyed fleets of US warships. Fun fact, being 50.1 meters tall, this Godzilla is the second shortest in the franchise. The Minus One Godzilla's atomic breath is as powerful as nuclear detonation, which converted Tokyo to ruins and even destroyed him in the end. But there's a new twist to his atomic breath process. While charging up for his atomic breath, Godzilla's dorsal spikes glow a bright blue, expand outwards one by one, and then contract inwards just before he unleashes the atomic blaze. The Minus One Godzilla has regenerative abilities, which are more advanced than its predecessors, because he can regrow from just a single piece of his remains. The film Godzilla Minus One ends on a suggestive note when, after Godzilla is blown to bits, a piece of his flesh sinks to the bottom of the ocean. Marvelous Verdict Godzilla is undoubtedly the OG king of the monsters, but comes with a complex and tragic history of mutation. With its varying heights and powers, Godzilla has wowed its audience for almost 70 years, and we hope that the tradition continues. Legendary Pictures is already making a sequel to the 2021 blockbuster Godzilla vs. Kong, in which both the titans will make a comeback. How excited are you for more additions to the Godzilla franchise? Tell us in the comments below. And if you like this video, please give us a shout out and watch the space for more marvelous content.